right, let's get to our top five center fielders. Yes. Uh, we started with right fielders the other day. A little bit of controversy as I screwed the pooch uh, and considered Corbin Carroll a left fielder. Would have had him in my top five, but now he's going to be the number one left fielder because left field stinks. After going through all yeah. the outfield, he's going to put right him in a position and, he's not going to play. That's that's yeah, okay. Right field and center field are loaded, right and you'll see bad. after we reveal the five center fielders today. Left field is just weak in baseball, uh, so we'll get to that one tomorrow. But today is the top five center fielders, uh, and I guess I'll kick us off. Uh, with number five on the list at number five, I have in Toronto, formerly Houston Astro, Mr. George Springer. Mm. He was injured his first year up there. Uh, didn't have his best year. Uh, he's now in year three or four. Is it Tyler? Um, now he's stabilized. He's back to offensively and defensively being a really good player. Uh, I have him as the fifth best center fielder. Renee, who you got? And to clarify, as Jamie was mentioning, we're going based off of where guys are projected to be playing in 2024. So somebody like a Brandon Nimmo, who now is, is going to be moved to left field uh, because of Harrison Bader playing center field for the Mets. He's not on our list. He'll be there for left fielders, possibly. So I'm going number five with Michael Harris the second. Now, Michael Harris, you might be wondering, why is he on my list? Because of the fact that he had a drop-off last year after having his NL Rookie of the Year season in 2022 um Harris had an injury early on in 2023 he had a, a tweak in his back when he was trying to steal a bag and it really did impact his game overall especially his at bats now he's not his defensive side of his game is the strength of his game but I think that we're going to get an upside for him in 2024 it's going to be after what could be considered a sophomore slump a third year triumph uh, or turnaround maybe for Harris. And I could see him having a stronger 2024 season with better at bats uh, than the numbers that he had last year and then being a consistently steady center fielder. So I'm former going former rookie of the year. I'm going with the Braves. Tyler Michael Harris is second. Who you got fifth? Yeah, I've been burned by this guy once. <laughs> I expect to be burned by this guy again at some point in his career, but it's undeniable that he was a former rookie of the year, a former MVP. And last year he had a bounce back resurgent year. Uh, there's a question that maybe this guy goes back to striking out 200 times a season mm. next year. But until that happens, I'm going to go with Cody Bellinger at number five. I know he doesn't have a job. He was with the Cubs. I expect him to be back with the Cubs this season in some capacity. I think like Jamie, like you mentioned, whoever blinks first is going to lose this one. But I think if the Cubs and Cody Bellinger don't unite, it's a loss for the Cubs regardless. Um, a 319 BABIP last year, if that re rescinds back to the average of the league, which is about 292 since it was started to be calculated, uh, the numbers will come down just a little bit, but he struck out less. He got on base more, and, and oddly enough, the singles went up, like the flare shots and the base hits, and it's probably why the BABIP was as high as it was, but uh, I'm going to go with Cody Bellinger at number five until he proves me otherwise. All right. Uh, risky one. A little too risky for me. I didn't uh, include him in my five. Spoiler alert. Uh, but at number four, I know it's a guy Tyler's real fired up about. Young phenom for the Chicago White Sox. Our buddy Herb out in Chicago. Uh, this is pretty much the only piece they have to hang on to. Um, Luis Robert, the center fielder, I have number four. Power number surged last year. He has a chance to be something real special here. Uh, I think this is more... Like, he's probably more on, like, the five, six range of being safe in your predictions. But I think if you project ahead another year of what he did last year, I mean, this is a kid that could play himself into the top three spot. No, no problem about it. Yeah, my number four, it's weird to not have him at number one, but it's also weird that I didn't want to put him in my top five at all. This should be and could be his last season as a top five center fielder. It's Mike Trout. Um, listen, he's been injury-plagued year after year it's weird that at one point he was and he still is one of the faces of baseball but he was the best the MVP the face of the league the generational talent but he's been injured the last few seasons and hasn't been able to play over 100 games once since 2021 I don't think this year is going to be a healthy year for Mike Trout but I still think in the games that he will play in for the Angels that he's still going to be a top center fielder. But I think this is it for Mike Trout, especially losing his counterpart, Shoei Otani. I think the Angels are going, 
Um, yep. Even more, it's going to be a greater decline. Uh, but I do think for 2023 season, having batted 263, hitting 18 home runs, this year is going to be a, a regression. Um, but I still think he'll be a top center fielder, if that even makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going number four, All Mike right. Trout. You can't go wrong with Mike Trout. Tyler, who you got yeah. number four? Listen, even in a bad year, Mike Trout was still pretty good last year. Yeah. A healthy season of Mike Trout. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know if that ever happens again, but I also chose Mike Trout as my number four uh, center fielder on this list as well. (laughs) Not a whole lot to add to what Renee already put together because it's Mike Trout. Listen, we know who he is. We know what he was. And even at 75% of what Mike Trout used to be, he's still a top five center fielder for me. I'm not going to add too much. I'll go Mike Trout number four. Yeah. And I'm going to take your guys torch and just run with it. I have him third, Um, you know, at one point when healthy, when playing full seasons, he was considered, you know, the modern day Mickey Mantle. Uh, he's that good. Uh, it's it's all a question of is his Hammett bone uh, safe? Is his back okay? Uh, he's just been plagued by injuries, and I'm a little bit of this projection is assuming he's going to be healthy this year, which is probably a foolish errand on my part. But when healthy, uh, he's right there with these, you know, my top two guys as potential best center fielder in baseball. All right, I'm going number three, Julio, 2022 AL Rookie of the Year, Julio Rodriguez. Tough to put him at number three. He honestly could, and I struggled to uh, with the top three because I felt like they were pretty interchangeable. Julio Rodriguez is on the rise. He's one of the best uh, talents, young talents especially, in baseball. Uh, listen, Julio Rodriguez had a great 2022 rookie campaign. 2023 followed that up. Batting 275, 32 homers, 37 stolen bases, a 5-3 war. Again, wanted to put him number one or two, but I just feel like for his youth alone um, and just for the fact that I think we're going to just see more from my other guys that I put at one and two and being with the Mariners, he's number three for me, guys. Well, Renee, I can't read, so uh, apparently your the rest of your graphic is all screwed up now because I had your two at three and your three at two, and oh, the rest of them look terrible. I so might I'm, have typed that wrong, I'm actually. just going to apologize to you in advance. No, 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 that's on me. I, I messed up. I, I had some real struggles with these <laughs> graphics today. Um, so the guy that Jamie put at three and a guy hopefully we see on your list later on this uh, <laughs> this list, Renee, for me at number two, at three is Luis Robert Jr. as well. I think that... This kid is the crown jewel of. Love. I love this kid. He's the crown jewel of the White Sox. You I, like him, like him. I. I would. Uh, <laughs> I, like I would move him. heaven and earth to acquire a Luis Robert Jr. I think a lot of teams would as well. This kid has superstar potential. Between he and Adolis Garcia, they're two of my guys that I think are going to combine for maybe eighty to ninety home mm. runs this year. I love this kid's potential. Um, I'm going to put him at three just because the two guys ahead of him, I like him. I like them a little bit better and they've played full seasons as of late. I know Robert played his first full season last year, but I'm going to put him at three for now. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you're, you think this kid is, uh, potentially right there with these next two and at season's end, we'll, uh, we'll circle back on that. He certainly has the potential to be, uh, at number two, uh, I'm going to go with Julio. Um, you know, he's a phenomenal player. What is there to say about this kid? Uh, everything he does is good. Uh, you know, could be this next generation. If he wasn't in Seattle, there was a yeah. real chance, like outside of Otani, um, and you know, Aaron Judge and some of these other. He, like he, he's good enough to be a face of baseball. Uh, he's that exciting. If you have a Julio Rodriguez that has come up through your system and, and emerged at center field uh, the way he has, you're in a really good spot. It's a shame they play in Seattle and they don't get as much uh, recognition, but he's changing that a little bit. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, number two for me. Well, Tyler, I I understand the confusion because I was torn between two and three, especially Uh, Luis Robert Jr. is my number two. Now, the 26-year-old White Sox talent. Yep, it's fine because honestly, I could see it either direction. Um, And I even as we were going through this, I'm like, dang, did I make a mistake? Should I put Luis Robert at number three or number two? But either way, I know, I know. Here's the thing. If he can stay healthy, Luis Robert Jr. is my number two. Now, that's the key factor, staying healthy. 2023 was a great season for him. 264, uh, 30 home runs. He finished with a five war on the dot. He's a great center fielder. His defensive war, 1.1 defensive war. He's really just an all-around talent. But again, like like we mentioned with Julio, with the White Sox, which in itself causes you to, you don't see him as much. He might get underrated a little bit. But I think the biggest key is if we can get those flashes that we've seen 
for an entire season, he stays healthy, I think he can be the number two center fielder. So, Tyler, before we get to your number two, MBD says in the chat, and I do think that's really good value, that Julio is about yeah. plus 1,200 to win the MVP. Tyler's talked about their starting rotation. It's really good. If Seattle just goes out and wins the division, I think that could, that gets Julio Rodriguez in the MVP discussion. So, MBD, I, I agree. I think that's that's pretty good value. We will do a preseason like gambling odds show one day sure. where we talk about a lot of these things. Uh, but MBD, I'm with you. That's a, that's really good value for Julio. Yeah. Tyler, who you got? Number yeah, two? I think there's a very realistic chance that that could potentially happen. I'm going Julio Rodriguez at number two. And yes, I know he struck out 175 times last year, but this kid is a superstar. Eh, that's already. modern baseball, baby. I, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a stretch of four games. I forget if it was in July or early August where he had 17 hits. In four games, which is just insanity. This kid puts bat on ball a lot, despite the fact that he strikes out 175 times. Uh, 32 home runs last year, 275 average. I expect both of those numbers to go up. And he's playing in a cavernous ballpark. Yeah. That is a pitcher-friendly ballpark. And the fact that he put up 32 home runs, I could see him getting up to 35, 38 this year. If he, if he stays healthy, bank park, he did 40 he'd plus. hit 40 easy. I think yeah. that this kid is an absolute stud. And if it weren't for the consensus number one across the board, he'd be the number one center fielder. Yeah, today. I think uh, all three of us have the same number one here. He's moving from right field on that short porch in Yankee Stadium because of Juan Soto's arrival over to center field. And it's wild to see a guy as big as this man is mm. be athletic enough to play any position in the outfield. He plays a pretty good center field for somebody as freakishly large and muscular as he is. Aaron Judge, I mean, <laughs> how fun would it be to watch this guy play as your everyday center fielder or right fielder or anything? Aaron Judge, one of the best players in baseball. Uh, just an absolute freak. All of us have him number one. Yeah, and listen, I know we're talking about Julio as a, a betting odd to be the be an MVP this season, but Aaron Judge did win MVP as a center fielder, and I, you know, you cannot deny his talent. He's definitely uh, one of the best in baseball, without a doubt. Aaron Judge, even with an injury last season causing him to miss a third of the season. Still had a great season overall. Uh, look, Aaron Judge is the number one hands down. We don't even need to get into this, the stats, the numbers, the amount of home runs he's hit, the huge gap between him and the next best guy. It's Aaron Judge number one until it's his number one spot to lose. Yeah, and some basically. people might be saying, where's Mookie Betts? Mookie's now a second baseman. <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot exactly. of positional movement in baseball this year. Uh, Tyler, any final thoughts there before we get to guess that swing yeah, on the, how good Aaron Judge the is? The last year that he played more <laughs> games in center than he did in right, he posted a zero defensive war, which is as average as you can possibly get. And I think his athleticism makes up for the fact that, you know, he's probably maybe not a, quote, natural center fielder, but he's got no, a cannon for an but he's arm. he's good enough. And he's play. athletic and he strides well. A zero defensive war when you're, by the way, the last time he played center field, he posted a 10.40 mm -hmm. war, which, by the way, uh, is good enough for tied for 39th all time in the history of a single season baseball. That seems um, pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty freaking good. And uh, I don't expect a regression, at least offensively this season. I expect a good enough year defensively to compete in center yeah. with Juan Soto now in right. This guy's going to hit 40 home runs probably and, uh, you know, be right in the MVP mix. Uh, Aaron Judge is the number one despite the, the positional move. And there was a, yeah. a, a rumor back in the day, and I think Ruben Amaro confirmed it, that they Phillies did ask for Aaron Judge in a trade. I forget what trade it was. Yeah, I'm brain farting been. real bad. Uh, the Yankees. Yankee said no on that one, uh, but I believe the Phillies did ask for Aaron Judge back in the day. Uh, that would have been yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, so. watching him break home run records and then still follow up with an injured <laughs> season of 37 homers when he was injured. Uh, and yeah, that's right. so do, do you know what, do you know what the, you know the trade was, by the way? What oh, was they it? They asked for either Aaron Judge or Le Luis Severino to get Marlon Bird. <laughs> That would have been an all-time fleecing. Oh, my God. Uh, I wish they Can had pulled imagine? that off. Yeah, uh, a couple other guys, you know, that uh, Cedric Mullins was right there. Michael Harris was right there. So center field is a loaded position, mm -hmm. uh, as you saw with right field the other day. 